the islanders are full of mystery. They are believed to be staying on the island for more than 30,000 years. No visitors are allowed on the island. They violently defend their island with spears and arrows. Even though the island falls under India's governance, the Indian government recognizes the island as a sovereign entity and makes efforts to ensure they are left undisturbed. All kinds of travel have been banned and the government maintains a constant armed patrol to prevent intrusions by outsiders. The sentinel is well expected to have a population between 50 to 200. We know very little about them. Where they came from and exactly when they got on the island are complete mysteries to mankind. There appears to be no agriculture among them. They wear almost no clothing with the exception of some headbands and ornaments. Music, dancing and celebrations are known to be part of their culture. We don't know what language they speak. Even we have no idea what the sentinels call themselves. North Sentinel Island first appears in history in 1771. John Ritchie, an East Indian Company officer, reported seeing lights on the island as he was passing by. He was on a hydrographic survey, so he had no business to stop there. The Sentinelies remained undisturbed for nearly a century. Until in 1867, the Indian merchant ship Nineva wrecked on the island due to heavy storm. Its 106 crew members landed on the beach. The sentinel is waited for three days and finally attacked with bows and arrows. Luckily, they were rescued soon after. British officer M.B. Portman fancied himself an anthropologist led an armed group to North Sentinel in 1880. The crew discovered some hastily abandoned villages. They captured two elderly couple and four children. The elderly couple died shortly due to disease. Portman decided to return back the children to the island. The experience definitely didn't leave the sentinels with warm, foggy feelings toward foreign visitors. Many years later, a National Geographic film crew approached the island with boats in order to shoot some footages. The adventure ended before it began, with the director taking an arrow in his leg. In 1881, an Australian cargo ship and her crew of 28 ran aground on the reef. But this time the sailors were rescued by a helicopter. Later visitors to the island say that the sentinels seem to have salvaged metal from the ship for their tools and weapons. A group of Indian anthropologists made the first and last peaceful contact with the sentinels in 1991. But Sentinelli's hospitality had its limits. On the very next visit, the Sentinelli's warned by sewing their weapons. The Indian government wisely banned any further researchers from visiting the island. In 2006, the Sentinelli's killed two Indian fishermen who were fishing too close to the island. And finally, 
The event that brought global attention to the island was the murder of a young American missionary, John Chow, who went to North Sentinel Island to convert the Sentinelese to Christianity. The Sentinelese killed him soon after he set foot on the island. However, given the special status of the island, nobody was prosecuted and any attempt to retrieve the body was desisted. They don't care much for company and they have expressed that clearly without even a common language. The complete isolation of the Sentinelese means any contact with outside would put them at risk of disease as they are likely to have no immunity to even common illness such as flu and measles. Of the four existing tribes of Andaman, Sentinelese tribe is the only one which is culturally intact and healthy. In 1999 and 2006, the Jaraba tribe suffered outbreaks of measles a disease that has wiped out many tribes worldwide following contact with outsiders. Other than the Sentinelis, other Arnaman tribes are now addicted to alcohol and marijuana. The tribes have been living on the islands for centuries without any problem. Their trouble started after they came into contact with outsiders. The tribes of the islands do not need outsiders to protect them. What they need is to be left alone. <laughs>